That's really incredible. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm here today at 80 Acre Farms. The building behind me looks more like a warehouse than a farm, but they're actually able to grow over 100 times more food than a conventional farm using 100% renewable energy and 97% less water. Oh, and did I mention they use robots to harvest their produce? The whole system could potentially change the way we grow food, and I can't wait to check in with the team and see how they've been using science to grow fruits and vegetables. Hey, Liz. Hey, how you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for inviting me out here. Of course. So, so tell me, how do you guys grow uh, food indoors? Absolutely. Um, so every, all the plants that grow in here um, are actually built to the, the perfect environment. So they're able to control the CO2 level, um, the amount of nutrients that's going into our water, um, and then we're also able to control the humidity as well. And where, so where are, the, where are the plants grown then? So we have all of these containers here, and um, we have a, uh, an amount of about a thousand trays. Um, so really amazing process. We actually have our trusty robot named Sam, who okay. does all the heavy lifting for us. Um, she also helps us with the transplanting process. We'll actually use these soil substitutes called um, hydro cubes. Okay. And, and what we do is it's uh, made of coconut core and peat moss. So we'll actually dip these, dip these hydro cubes in water. Um, we'll sprinkle in some seeds. And then about, um, we'll put that into germination for about two days. Okay. Um, after two days, we actually put it in propagation. Um, that lasts for about a week. After that, we'll actually put our uh, baby plants on this conveyor belt. Okay. Um, that's going to move towards Sam. And what Sam's going to do is she's going to pick up um, those trays and put it in its designated uh, grow zone. Um, we can actually do that by um, controlling this little computer here and typing in the different coordinates so Sam knows where to go. Um, and then in about four to five weeks, we'll have uh, lettuce that's ready to be harvested. Sam will take that out, we'll grab those trays, and we'll run it through our harvester. And um, within a day of harvest, we'll deliver that to local retailers and restaurants. That's so. awesome. So, okay, so let me get this straight. So you guys you guys plant the seeds in, in the hydro cubes. Absolutely. Um, and then you let them grow for a little bit. You move them into bigger, into bigger containers, and then they go into here where their environment is completely curated for them. Absolutely. Can you show me a little bit of how you guys do that? Absolutely. I'd love to uh, take you over to Noah and have him uh, show you a little bit more. Awesome. All right. Well, let's, get, let's net it up. And awesome. You lead the way. So, no, what, do, what are you guys growing here? Yeah, so we're growing a number of different types of lettuces here. Okay. So we grow about six different varieties. And you can see, these are obviously very small plants. They're nowhere near full age. But you can see kind of some of the different varieties and how they look different, even at this stage of growth. Yeah. So this is like a green frill variety. This is a green romaine variety. You know, down over on this side, we've got some others. And up here, we've got kind of a, a good mix. Yeah. So... What are all the things that plants need? Well, we said, we said plants need carbon dioxide, they need water, they need light. And they, they need yep. to be, have some sort of temperature that's optimal for them. How do you guys curate all of those things? I know that's a lot of things, but, yep. how do you, but you guys have created this whole environment. How do you guys do that? There's other things like humidity that we look at and air temperature. We also look at things like water temperature, nutrient mix, pH dissolved oxygen, and a couple other things. So, so we're talking about- It's a whole very a curated environment specifically for these plants. Yep, and so each variable has a different way that we look to kind of regulate it and make sure the plants are getting exactly what they want. So things like temperature, we've got these big air handling units above, which make sure that we have kind of uniformity of temperature throughout the grow zone. And then the things like water. So with water, plants need to both have the right amount of water, so not too much and not too little, to make sure they can have good root growth, and they also need the right nutrient mix at the right pH. Now we have water stacks downstairs that you can see that handle all of that. But one of the things that's really cool is in controlling that entire process, we're actually able to use 97% less water than regular farming. Wow. So what else do you guys grow other than lettuce? I know that we got a lot of lettuce here today. What else do you guys grow? Yeah, so we grow lettuces, we grow basils, arugulas, kales. We're also growing things like tomatoes, cucumbers. Oh, that's awesome. We can do things like spinaches and some other uh, interesting things we're working on. Conceptually, we can actually grow anything in here. Okay. It's just a question of kind of fine tuning the exact setup with for, these controls to the right the plants, shape. Yeah, for the plant, well, whatever that particular plant needs. Exactly. So how do you guys know when the plants are ready to harvest? When you think about it, plants are kind of like pumps, which means that their growth is very dependent on their roots. Okay. You remember the old adage about trees, right? That a tree's roots extend as far beneath the earth as it does above. Sure. Plants function basically the same way. And so for us, 
we have space in our containers and in our tables for a certain amount of root mass, right? And so when the plant, if it starts to get close and near that threshold where we have a certain amount of root mass which can support a certain amount of plant, we're gonna to wanna to come through and make sure to harvest it. That way it's not trying to grow beyond what it's prepared Overusing for. resources that could go to other plants too. Exactly. So you guys can grow this, you said in 20 days as opposed to 60 days outside? Yep. Yep. Wow, and I mean that's got to give you even more turnover and get you, uh, you know, allow for even more plants to be produced and harvested and you know get to people's tables. Absolutely, and it's it's more plants. And the coolest part about it to me is actually the fact that we can learn so much faster because of it. Right. So farming is really really difficult, right? And if you farm your whole life, you farm for 50 years, you got 50 cycles, right? Well, you guys can get 50 cycles in like one year. I can get even more than that. Yeah. And that is such a different, it's like learning before the internet and after the internet, right? where the pace of change that we can test things and keep learning is so much faster. Like you said, it's, it goes from 50 cycles a lifetime to hundreds every single year for every crop. That's awesome. And so every year, it's like I've been here for not very long and I've already gone through so many turns that every month to us feels almost like a year. That's awesome. The future is here. <laughs> All right, so do I get to try some of the this delicious food that you guys have grown? You do. So I actually have our Plantopia blend. Okay. Um, which is a little mix of uh, red frill, green frill, and baby romaine. Oh, very cool. Um, and then I have our little cherry tomatoes, which oh, they are the sweetest thing. I know I'm biased, but they're fantastic. There you go. Time to carbo load. <laughs> what do you I mean, think? It's as fresh as anything you would grow in your backyard. Oh, thank you. It's delicious. And it's, um, so I've always been a salad fan, but I never really yeah. thought twice about lettuce, but this lettuce truly does have a wonderful sweetness, crunch. That's, yeah, it is. It is kind of sweet, isn't it? Yeah. And then this guy is amazing, super sweet. Um, yeah, I'll go on record even on camera that in-season tomatoes are one of my favorite things in the world. So. Oh. Holy crap. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not like, that's really, really good. Yeah. I, um, I've been known to finish an entire pack within like five minutes. Yeah, so. it's like candy. Yeah, it's awesome. So how does farming like this, how, how is that going to change how we get our food? I think with indoor farming, I think there's gonna be a great way where we can just um, get a high yield, fast growth, um, get food to people that have gone more towards the city. Um, and then with this type of farming too, all of this will be delivered within a day. So your food's not gonna travel over 2000 miles. It's not gonna live its life in transportation. Um, there's not going to be, it, it actually prevents food waste, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I really do think it's the future of farming. Um, I think traditional agriculture and indoor farming will kind of live side by side in a happy marriage. And, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, Liz, thank you so much for inviting oh, me out course. here. This is really great to tour the facility and eat your delicious food. It thank you. Really, really great. <laughs> we'll take these too. I little, will, I will. A salad. <laughs> and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Science Around Cincy. <laughs> I can't wait until I can see the team and see how they've been using science to grow food. Oh, that was really close. <laughs> or in this way. Oh, wait. Okay, I think it's good.